Hey guys, we're here at the Sepang International Circuit to test drive all five of the new Toyota GR and Toyota GR Sport models. That includes this one, the Hilux GR Sport, the GR Supra with a manual gearbox, the GR Corolla also with a manual, GR86, obviously manual, and the Corolla Cross GR Sport. So, goes without saying, it's gonna be a fun day. Let's go. So before we drive on track, first things first, simple driving exercises. It's just like Gran Turismo, you gotta earn your stripes before you drive, for real. So we're gonna drive a simple slalom track on a GR Corolla as well as a GR86, just to get a hang of the handling of the two cars. Let's go. a pretty decent bite-sized starter for these two cars, uh, a moose-bouche if you will. Anyway, the GR Corolla certainly feels very grippy, there's a lot of traction, a lot of grip through the corners and there's a lot of mechanical feel through the steering wheel as well, while the 86 just feels super flat, super low, a lot more fun I think. Next up, a quick acceleration test on the back straight of the Sepang track. The GR Supra has got 388 horsepower, the GR Corolla has got 300 PS, both manual, so yeah, I can smell the clutch right now. Let's go! surprisingly easier to launch the Supra compared to the GR Corolla although I'm just not a big fan of the really offset pedal box I sat in the car as usual press on the brakes but that was actually the clutch pedal that was so far towards the center of the car a little bit weird but once it's going man it's such a quick car the feel of a six-speed manual on a big car like this big capacity three liter twin turbo in line six engine is just fabulous it sounds so it sounds so brawny so muscular fantastic and then you've got the gr curl as well it's a little bit harder to modulate the clutch to launch but once again it gets going it's quick it's not much slower than the supra even despite having about half the engine capacity and half the number of cylinders that remember is a 1.6 liter three cylinder engine and then the sound is really good as well it sounds so muscular as well i think it sounds way better than most four cylinder turbo engines out there all right one last thing before we get to drive on the track proper a bit of fast cornering this time we're coming back onto the gr corolla as well as the gr86 now let's bring it on
over the last few corners of the Sepang track, the two cars just feel so different from each other. The GR Corolla just felt so secure through the corners, just shooting out of the corners after the Apex just felt fantastic. The amount of traction available is mind-blowing. And then you've got the 86. My God, that car is so lively. Coming out of the corners, you can sort of feel like the back is threatening to come out. But yeah, it's just so low, so flat. Such fantastic fun cars to drive and then you've got the rev matching system on the GR Corolla as well a bit of a cheat code I think makes you look and sound like a hero on the outside but on the inside it feels so smooth even better than on the GR Yaris from before And finally now comes the most exciting part of the day. Finally driving the GR cars out on the road. The GR86, GR Corolla and of course the GR Supra. Let's go guys! So let's start with the GR86 first. Unfortunately, I was driving the automatic version, but even then it felt so, so much quicker than the old version. This bigger, more powerful 2.4 litre engine is the very engine that the 86 was screaming for to begin with. Finally, now it's complete. And it's not just the power, it felt just so much smoother, had much nicer sound compared to the rough old engine. And on track, it felt so alive. The rear end was just dancing around you. It can carry a lot of speed through the corners but you have to be a little bit careful with your throttle and braking inputs. If you don't trail brake, probably the back end might try to step out on you but even then it's just so much fun to control the car on the track. Next is the GR Corolla. This compared to the 86 just felt like a much much more serious machine. It's much heavier, it's much more powerful and everything just felt so much more serious. Now this year is a proper manual version because with the GR Corolla, if you don't want a manual, you don't get a GR Corolla at all. That is the only version available. And you know what? The transmission is absolutely fantastic. It has a very mechanical feel to it and the short throw is superb in feel. And then you've got the traction which is supreme. Shooting out of corners, you can full throttle way earlier than you think you can and the car will just shoot off with not a hint of complaint. The level of traction available out of corners on power is just sublime with the GR Corolla. I've got nothing else to say about it. As fast as the GR86 felt, this is on a whole different level. And lastly, the GR Supra. Of course, we have driven this car before, but this is now its final form. It has a more powerful 388 horsepower engine and a proper three pedal, six speed manual transmission. And to drive, I'm gonna be honest, it's a little bit scary. This is a big and heavy car and flinging it through corners while trying to give it the boot, the back really does feel a little bit loose. But you know what? It is such a ball throwing this car around on track. I will say this though, the Supra did feel the least interactive among the three cars, but that just goes to show the breadth of abilities of the three cars over here. All three are Toyotas, all three are proper GR models, but each one feels distinctly different. Distinctly a Corolla, distinctly 86, and of course, a Supra. And now it's time to see how all that exciting GR-ness filter down to Toyota's bread and butter cars. We're gonna drive the Corolla Cross GR Sport as well as the Hilux GR Sport. Now both of these models have been tuned to have better dynamics out on the road. Let's see how good they feel. Out on the road, the GR Sport version of the Toyota Corolla Cross and the Hilux felt very similar to their respective standard models. But each one felt different enough, improved enough over the regular version. Especially in the Corolla Cross GR Sport, there's definitely a step forward in terms of the suspension and the steering feel. It felt slightly more dynamic, slightly better to drive. And at the same time, it felt just as comfortable, which is very important for a family SUV like this. Now, I'm not gonna lie, 
Alliance say there's a world of difference between the GR Sport and the standard car but the small difference is still a meaningful one and it's definitely a step in the right direction and if you package it together with the improved looks on the outside yeah it's well worth it to go for the GRS version for the Corolla Cross as for the Hilux GRS, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Well, yes, it does feel a little bit more sporty, probably a bit more controlled through faster corners, but out in the real world, when it comes to absorbing bumps, it does feel a little bit too stiff. Perhaps not the change that I would have wanted for a car like the Hilux. But if you're gonna drive the car mostly on the highways and less on really bad roads like we did, perhaps the Hilux GR Sport is gonna be a decent buy as well. But let's be honest, most people will buy the Hilux GR Sport anyway because of its improved appearance. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You pay a little bit more money, it looks much better on the outside and on the inside as well. It makes you feel a little bit more special. To me, a GR Sport is supposed to do that and it does it very, very well. So that's it guys, a full day of driving super exciting cars from the Toyota GR and GR Sport models. Just a few short years ago, you would not have imagined that all these cars would come from a brand like Toyota. Times have certainly changed. The GR86, the GR Corolla, and of course the GR Supra, each one fantastic beast, but with very distinct feel as you drive them. All, however, are super nice to drive in their own right. And then you've also got the GR Sport lineup, the Corolla Cross GR Sport, and of course, the Hilux GR Sport. These cars are, again, nowhere near as powerful, nowhere near as exciting to drive, but you can definitely see a little bit of that sporty lineage filtering down to their standard cars. Perhaps not so much in terms of performance, but definitely in terms of looks. And to many people, that's probably worth the effort right there. So what do you think? Which one of these cars would be your favorite? Which one would you buy with your own money? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.